over 9,000 years old to an epic death match between a giant bat and a python. This is Trending Tuesdays. Number 8. Researchers are concerned about the levels of sea ice at the Earth's poles. It's at the lowest level now than it has ever been for this time of year. In a sign of warming global temperatures, climate scientists report that an amount of ice equal to the size of India has been lost. Some of the causes are thought to be a buildup in man-made carbon gases. The El Nino weather event is another possibility. This year, it was thought to unlock heat from the Pacific Ocean. Experts also point to an unexpected swing in temperatures that occurred naturally. In the past, the expansion of sea ice in Antarctica has been used to counter claims of global warming being a condition caused by humans. As opposed to the Arctic, which is an icy ocean surrounded by land, Antarctica is a huge land mass surrounded by water. Climate experts are keeping a wary eye on the South Pole in particular. With temperatures worldwide this year expected to be the warmest on record, Antarctica is of particular concern to scientists. The worry is that without sea ice to hold them back, the glaciers there might slip into the ocean more quickly and cause sea levels to rise. Number 7. Did you know that jaguars once roamed the American Southwest? The creatures were found around the region before habitat loss and predator control programs protecting livestock were initiated. The animals were steadily eliminated over the course of 150 years, with the last verified female jaguar in the U.S. killed by a hunter in Arizona in 1963. But now the animals seem to be making a comeback. A jaguar named El Jefe, that's Spanish for the boss, was spotted roaming the Whetstone Mountains of South Southern Arizona in 2011, and he's made numerous appearances since then, including an appearance south of Tucson in 2015. The boss hasn't been seen for over a year, but is thought to live in the Santa Rita Mountains south of downtown Tucson. And now a second Jaguar was recently observed around an army base around 75 miles south of that city. The Arizona Game and Fish Department says this new one is a separate individual, not El Jefe. Experts say that in the last three decades or so, male jaguars have appeared in the U.S. and might be re-establishing their presence in the historical range. Number 6. An alien-like object washed ashore on a New Zealand beach that had locals baffled. It seemed to be composed of a writhing mass of long, slimy tentacles. Was it some sort of strange sea creature or part of a shipwreck? Well, it was actually thought to be a large piece of driftwood, apparently covered in gooseneck barnacles. They're filter-feeding crustaceans that are often swept up from ocean depths during bad weather and are known to attach themselves to hard surfaces like rocks and flotsam in the ocean. What appear to be tentacles are part of the barnacles and are tipped with shells, which appear as the white objects there. Did you know that gooseneck barnacles are widely consumed as delicacies in many countries around the world? In Spain and Portugal, they're known as percebes and are served with their shells attached. Number 5. Some ancient secrets about Egyptian mummies have been revealed thanks to cutting-edge technology. Six mummies dated between 900 BC and 180 AD had been held at the British Museum, but never unwrapped. However, researchers captured thousands of images of the mummies by scanning them with a dual-energy tomography scanner. 3D models were created by using volumetric software. The result of this virtual unwrapping and reconstruction allows researchers to explore minute aspects of the mummy's physiologies. For example, one mummy identified as a priest daughter was shown to have a buildup of plaque in her arteries. Experts can use such information to determine if the ancient Egyptians suffered from diseases that many modern people suffer from today, such as cardiovascular disease. The data can also be used to better understand what it may have been like to live along the Nile some 3,000 years ago. Number four. A fossil discovered recently offers proof that dinosaurs really did have tail feathers. The specimen was found in a glob of tree amber that wound up in a market in Myanmar and contained the tip of a dinosaur's tail. Estimated at some 99 million years old, the creature was a small, flightless theropod that lived during the Cretaceous period. CT scans revealed that the specimen's tail was colored chestnut brown with a pale underside. Dinosaur feathers preserved in amber have been found before, but 
earlier ones have been more difficult to link to their source animal. Experts think the unique find will help them better understand how feathers evolved from dinosaurs to birds. Number 3 References to creatures that were thought to be half bird and half fish in ancient legends are often thought to have been crinoids. Crinoids are marine animals that can live both in shallow waters and the deep oceans. Because of that, these animals are rarely seen. When they are spotted swimming, as was the case recently, it's taken as a highly unusual event. Crinoids are common around corals, but they usually stay attached to them. The pictures, taken by a diver off the coast of Thailand, offer a unique look at the creature navigating the water. There are some 600 recognized species of these animals, and some of them stay attached to the ocean floor by a stalk and are called sea lilies. Now this one is a feather star. It's free roaming and appears to be a cluster of zebra-striped feathers undulating back and forth. The feather-like appendages are covered with a sticky mucus used for trapping food from seawater. Number two. Have you ever wondered what someone from the Neolithic age looked like? Well, now we have some idea as to their appearance, thanks to archaeologists reconstructing the face of an ancient man. This fellow lived in Jericho, now located in the Palestinian territories close to the West Bank some 9,500 years ago. The so-called Jericho skull was actually discovered in 1953 by British archaeologists, but it wasn't until micro-CT scans were conducted from which a full plaster reconstruction was made. You can see see the reconstruction process in a series of photos from the trustees of the British Museum. Scientists think the man was a figure of great importance. That's due to the care people took to fill his skull with plaster. Plastered skulls were a type of ritual burial practice of the time. The corpse's skull was removed and filled with plaster. The dead person's face was painted over and the eye sockets were filled with shells. The Jericho skull was found among similar skulls, but this was the best preserved of the lot. Experts think the man was considered a good-looking guy in his day. Would you agree? Number one. An epic life and death struggle took place last week between a bat and a python. It happened in the Australian rainforest. Video of the incident showed a flying fox, which is a huge bat with a wingspan of a meter, or 3.2 feet, taking on what appears to be a reticulated python. The snake seemed to have the advantage as it wrapped itself around the flying fox, but seemingly at the last moment, the fruit bat managed to fight its way out of the python's stranglehold. It used its claws to gain a grip on the snake's scales, then used that impressive wingspan to great advantage. By expanding its wings, the bat was able to loosen the reptile's hold just long enough to squirm free. The snake seemed content with letting its prey escape. It appeared to have injured the bat as the creature was shown to slowly limp away, apparently unable to fly. This is Trending Tuesdays.